Hey guys, Sean Lentz here from Appalachian DIY, and today what we're going to be going over is how we spaced and placed our anchor bolts for our garage build. Alright, so today is going to be a little bit different. We're inside. It's a little bit easier to explain with our plans and stuff that we have. I can show you guys a little bit better um, than out on the pad about how we are spacing our anchor bolts, the depth of them, and all sorts of stuff you need to know for placing your anchor bolts and how we measured for them. So let's jump over here to our screen and we'll start from there. So here is a front view of our garage. We have our, our garage door here and our man door right here. And we're gonna be working with this section right here. So for spacing your bolts, there's some rules that you need to do with your sill plate. So this right here is our sill plate. Um, and right here is our first anchor bolt. Now your anchor bolts can be no closer than four inches from the edge of your sill plate and no greater than 12 inches from an edge. So this bolt right here would not be able to be placed out here. You're greater than 12 inches, and it can't be placed anywhere within here because it's within four inches. Anywhere here in this green zone is where it can be placed. So um, that's for the edges. Now, if you had a joint in here, say right here, the same applies for that you need it within four inches of the edge of that joint and 12 inches from the edge. You need to have it within that zone. Now for spacing, um, I have a little six foot uh, measuring tool here. The spacing between each bolt must not be greater than six feet. So if we put our measuring tool up here and zoom in, you can see that this bolt falls within the six feet and so does this one. Anything out here on the red zones, you can't place the bolt that far away. So we'll take our measuring tool down here, these line up as well, and then go down here, these line up as well. Now they're a little bit closer, as you can see. Um, they're probably within maybe three to four, three to four inches on each side, that's fine. What we can't have is we can't have this bolt out here in this stud bay, because if we do that now, even if we had this to the edge right there, here is the maximum that we're allowed to have. So we could have this bolt right about here. That's the maximum allowable distance you can have anchor bolts from each other. So we just ended up putting this anchor bolt into here. Now we're well within our six foot range. So we're good there. We have another end over here. Now here we are butting up a wall here, so we needed to stay a little bit further away, so we went more towards our 12 inch mark. We're still within the green zone, um, but we need to be careful with how far out here we go. So this is still within the parameters of it. Um, we also had an electrical pipe come in here, um, so we kind of wanted to stay away from that as well. Now, if you are putting on a second story, uh, the maximum allowable distance between each one is four feet. So you would need to close these down a little bit. So right here, you can see that we have a 40 inch wall. It's in between our man door and our garage. Let me bring my little tool over here and you will see that we are really close with the um, allowable limits. Um, we wanted to land this right here. I didn't want it all the way out here. We could have we could have taken this anchor bolt and put it out here, but I wanted it out more towards the ends, so we ended up putting it right here at the edge. Same with this one. So if you have a small wall, there still must be two bolts per sill plate um, right here. Um, you can't have just a single one in here. I think there is allowable limits for how small the wall is, but when you're talking 40 inches, um, just put one here, unless you're talking probably less than a foot, then yes, I could see just using one single anchor bolt, but for something like this, we still need our um, two bolts per this 40 inch wall right here. Um, we also have some over here on our steps. 
So each four foot span got a anchor bolt, two per sill plate um, as we stepped up. And then on the back section here, we used uh, three bolts for the back here as well. Um, so that's kind of where our anchor bolts at. Now, as far as depth goes, these aren't really showing how deep these are. For depth, the um, minimum amount you want is seven inches sunken into the block. So for our anchor bolts here, that would have, we used 10 inch bolts because we needed two inches above the top of the concrete surface. We needed an inch and a half for our sill plate itself. It's a two by six. And then we needed another half inch at least for our washer and our nut to go on. So what we did is we took painter's tape and just wrapped it around two inches down from the end of the bolt. And that is how we could tell as we just push them down into the concrete, how far to set them down. Um, so that made it really easy. It also helped protect them because it was a little bit longer until we actually could get the walls up so the bolts wouldn't rest. They are galvanized, but it did help protect them a little bit. It mainly helped us for setting the depth of these bolts. So they must be at a minimum of seven inches into the concrete. Now we are using half inch bolts. Uh, the holes for your sill plate are allowed to be five eighths um, big. So that's gonna give you an eighth of an inch play to kind of move that wall around where you need it to be. You don't need, we just eyeballed our bolts. We just stuck them in, eyeballed them. We didn't put a level on them or anything like that. Um, and that five inch, that extra eighth inch play, that's plenty um, as long as you guys are measuring out your holes properly. All right, the next thing I'm gonna show you guys is how we found our measurements for where to place our pins as far as the distance. So we'll jump over here to Inkscape again. So we have a yellow box right here. We can put this box right here on the edge of our wall. This is representing our tape that we're pulling. Um, and up here with the width of the box, you can see how long the box actually is. So when we pull our width like this, we get 11.35. So we'll just say 11 and a quarter inches. And that is the tape that we're gonna pull to get this measurement right here. So we'll just work our way down, pull our virtual tape again to this anchor bolt. And we have 76 and a quarter inches for that one. So we'll just keep doing this the whole length of the wall. 141 inches for this anchor bolt. And then right here, we have 203 and a half. So if we pulled tape out in the real world from this edge of the wall, we can find every single measurement to put that bolt exactly where we need it to be. Now, we also need the width of the block that we have to know where to put it. We just can't put it right to the edge. For building code, the anchor bolt needs to be within the center third of the board. So if you split that board up into thirds, the middle third is where that bolt needs to land. So we took our two by six and measured the exact center of it, which is two and three quarter inches. So if you would measure that from the edge of the board, place a mark, that's the exact center. However, we had our two by six set back in a half inch because we wanted our sheathing flush with the outside of the wall. So we needed to add a half inch. So two and three quarters plus a half is three and a quarter inches. So measuring from the outside of the wall in three and a quarter inches, that's exactly where our pin needed to be placed. So that measurement along with the distance from the very corner gave us the exact location where that pin needed to be. So with those two measurements, with the width and the length from the corner, you're gonna know exactly where to place that pin. And also with the depth, with the masking tape, now you have exactly what you need to set that pin. It's pretty simple when you think about it, especially when you can see the plans like this. That's why this is so important. Um, 
Inkscape is kind of like a paint program on steroids because you can get your measurements and stuff like this. It's free and it's just easy to use. So that's why I use this thing. Um, I'm not saying you guys have to use it. You can draw this out on some graph paper to scale. That's going to help you out also. But having plans like this is super simple. Um, I've came back and remeasured stuff. Um, change things and it's super simple once you have everything set up like this so with those measurements guys you're going to be able to set your anchor bolts no issues whatsoever I hope this gave you some information on that because it can seem a little daunting landing those anchor bolts within a stud bay and not on a stud but this is going to get you exactly where you need to be I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you hit that like button and head over to Appalachian DIY for more videos thanks again guys and I hope to see you next time.